Let me bring in Nason Mahbubi from the University of Pennsylvania, where he's a research scholar at the Center for the Study of Contemporary China. Nason, welcome to the program. Hi, Asya. Uh, we've, we've certainly seen a lot of ups and downs when it comes to the relationship between China and the United States. What is the state of relations and how much has the trade dispute tarnished that important relationship? You know, I was reflecting before coming on the program, Asya, we've had a few conversations, just even you and me on this program uh, over the last few months about this topic. And I think in some ways we're still in the same place that we've been the whole time except that this new equilibrium seems to have set in where there is a recognition on both sides that the relationship is about to become much more confrontational in the future years than it has been up to this point. And the trade war seems to me just the tip of the spear of that. And the big question is going to be, is that more confrontational relationship going to be done under the general rubric of uh, sort of conversation and cooperation in other areas, or will it be full-on confrontation across the board? And the answer to that is? I don't think we know yet. I, I think there's too many areas in which the U.S. and China do share uh, similar goals to imagine that cooperation will entirely go away. But I do think it really depends on uh, actors on both sides, and not just the top-level leaders, but lower level actors as well to maintain that aspect and not let it spin out into full on confrontation. So from points of friction on Taiwan, trade, mm -hmm. South China Sea, Iran nuclear agreement, clearly there are big differences between the two sides, Nathan, but there are also areas of agreement. Can you talk about some of that? Well, I think both the U.S. and China as strong uh, countries, probably the two strongest countries in the world, do have a basic interest in global stability. So even at that abstract level, I think both countries will be interested in maintaining, you know, stable international institutions, uh, stable uh, economic uh, exchanges. And so that seems like an abstract point, but there are a lot of more concrete ways in which that point can then manifest itself. And then, of course, you have things like climate change, which I think both countries are concerned about in different kinds of ways, and different actors in both countries are concerned about, but that is obviously an area of potential cooperation. But as you said, there are also some other flashpoints, including Taiwan, including potentially North Korea, including the South China Sea, including others, including trade, that could overwhelm the possibilities of cooperation unless both sides are careful. The Trump administration has been using threats and tariffs to force China to change its trade and what it says are unfair trade uh, practices. Is this a, a right strategy on, the, on behalf of the Trump administration? So I think within the U.S., amongst the observers of China, within the government and academia, there is a consensus of wanting to change Chinese behavior in those respects. And the debate is really about what is the right strategy. And so there will be some people who suggest that something like the TPP that was negotiated under the Obama administration, of course, President Trump pulled out of, would have created a positive incentive for change that could have been more effective than the Trump approach. The Trump approach, on the other hand, has brought the Chinese to the, to the negotiating table in a very direct way right now. The question is, will it actually end up in a resolution that Trump can sell or that any of us can objectively think of as being a positive resolution to those questions? My guess is that it's not going to resolve those issues. And even if Trump declares it as a certain kind of a victory, those issues that divide the U.S. and China in terms of trade will continue to be quite robust in the years going forward. All right, we'll leave it there. Nathan Mahbubi, thank you.